Hello Unreal Engine games developers. In this continuing desert driving game series, we're going to look at a problem with vehicle motion, namely jittering in the multiplayer client and how we go about fixing it. So let's get straight to it. Welcome back to this desert driving game series in Unreal Engine. And today we're going to look at a problem that was brought to my attention by Twana, one of the viewers of this channel, who noticed that when you played the game in standalone mode or build mode, that the client vehicles were jittering, as you saw in the intro. So let's first of all look at the problem, and then I'll talk you through what the cause of it is and how I resolved it. Luckily, it's a pretty quick fix, so uh, there's not too much to do to get it working properly. Now, the reason I hadn't really noticed this problem is because when I'd been testing this game out in play mode, I'd been using it in the viewport or play new editor window. And I believe that when you do this, everything runs in one process. So the, the server and the clients are all running within the, uh, the, the same frame rate. And in order to see this problem, I'll need to run it in standalone game mode. So if you want to see the problem for yourself, set the number of players to two or more, and then set it to standalone game in order to play it. Uh, there's one thing I want to do first. I'll show you, I'll show you what I want to, I want to identify which is the server and the client. Uh, when you play in standalone game mode, uh, it fires up the windows. The difference between this and playing in editor window is if I just uh, put these side by side, you can't see from the window title which is the server and which is the client. So let me quickly put in a print string which shows on the server so I can identify which is the client because it's only the problem only happens on the client. So let's come out. And actually, you won't be able to press escape to come out of standalone game mode. Uh, if you're on Windows, just do Alt F4 and that will quit and then Alt F4 and quit the other process as well. So what I'm going to put in as a little uh, helper to identify the server is in the player controller. So go to your player folder, player controller, and in the begin player section, at the begin player on the controller, we're testing if it's a local player controller before we put the score widgets out. Just put, if it's not the local player controller, it means it's the server player controller. Just drag out from there put in a print string and let's put in here server and put it on the in the duration put it on for 20 seconds so you get a chance to actually see it we'll take this out in a minute uh, but it'll just help so compile and save go into play mode and now you'll see one of these windows will say server So you see that on the left, it says server. So that's, we know, we know that's the server uh, process and the one on the right is the client uh, game. So the server doesn't have any problem. I drive around, nice and smooth movement. But if I switch over to the client and I start to move, can you see there's this sort of jittering that's going on? And it's particularly noticeable if I do slow corners. You can even see it in the tracks. And this sort of jittering is typical of problems in movement where the server and the client aren't in sync with each other. So the client is telling the server where it is and the server is saying, no, you're not, you're in this position. And it's sending it back. You've probably noticed it in online games when you have a very uh, long latency that those things get mismatched and I have to admit this had me stumped for a little while as to what the problem was um, until I thought about it a bit more and realized that this vehicle movement is being governed by physics uh, rather than us moving in a particular direction and I want to give a big shout out to a developer called Victor Avila 
whose blog I found online, and he talked about physics uh, tick rates. So you're probably familiar with the display frame rate, but there's also a physics tick rate that dictates how often it calculates the physics simulations. And this problem is really happening because those are out of sync. Luckily, there's a quick fix. I've, I've put a... Um, I put a link to Victor's blog so you can see for yourself the detail. I have to admit, I didn't take it all in, but I took enough in to fix the problem. So have a look at it and read through it yourself if you want more details. But let's do Alt F4 again on both of these to close it down. We'll leave this uh, server string in for now so we can see which is the client when we fix the problem. And as I said, the problem is to do with the physics um, tick rate. And luckily, you've got control of those settings. If you go back to the project window and go into your project settings, and if you type in the search details and you type in frame rate, there are two sections I'm interested in here. One is the uh, frame rate in the engine general settings, and the other one is the frame rate in the engine physics settings. Now, what you need to do is you need to make sure, as far as I'm aware, that the physics uh, is calculated more frequently and that the smoothing of the frame rate or the maximum frame rate uh, equals the time of the, uh, the physics tick rate. So I'm going to target a, a maximum rate of 120 frames per second for this. So the first thing to do is click on smooth frame rate and put the maximum frame rate here of 120. So that's the first thing to do in the engine. And then the next thing to do in the physics part of it is we want to enable this thing called substepping. That means it'll calculate the physics um, simulation more frequently. So click on that. And then in the delta time, we want to have this to happen 120 times a second to match the maximum frame rate. So to do that, we can actually just put in one divided by 120. And that is that makes sure that this executes 120 times a second. And I'm not sure if this makes a difference or not, but I upped this max sub steps to 12. And that seemed to do the trick. So just to recap, I've changed the, I put on smooth frame rate, maximum frame rate of 120 frames per second. And then in the physics side, I've ticked sub stepping and set the max sub step delta time to 1 over 120 and sub steps to 12. And that is all you need to do. So now if we go into play mode, and let's put these side by side. So we've got the server on the right and the client on the left. So I've got the client in control at the moment. And now if I drive around, lovely smooth motion and none of that jittering. I want to see the frame rate that I'm running at. I don't know if you're familiar with this, but you can hit the back tick button. It's usually uh, just under the escape key and you can type stat space FPS. And that show, showing me that I'm running at 120 frames per second. Now I've got quite a beefy graphics card here, so this will probably run at faster than this, but I think because I've set the smooth rate, it's, um, capping out at 120 frames per second. So you might ask yourself, what happens if I run it on machines that aren't capable of 120 frames per second? Well, I tested it out on my wife's PC, who has a 10-year-old graphics card, um, and I was getting 40 frames per second on that, still very usable, and you'll be pleased to hear that the physics was working fine on that as well. So it works across all machines. So I'm glad we were able to resolve this problem quickly and we'll then move on in the next episode to look at the game winning conditions to provide a, an objective for players to win the game. So I look forward to seeing you next time. In the meantime, stay safe and bye for now.